Hi, folks. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Peter Ostafichuk, and I'm the chair of first year engineering as well as a faculty member in mechanical engineering here at UBC. In my role as chair of first year, I do a lot of screencasting, which involves doing voiceover on PowerPoint, so narrating PowerPoint and turning that into video. And because of that, or at least I assume it's because of that, I've been getting a lot of emails lately about microphones. Which microphone do I use? How do I use it? Any recommendations for people to buy microphones and so on? And uh, while I'm happy to be answering email, I thought it might be more effective to do a quick video here and actually demo a bunch of different microphones. That way you can hear the difference and use that in making a decision. Of course, there will be limitations in terms of what's actually available out there, but this will at least give you a sense of sound quality. Although I'll show you a range of different microphones from very cheap to more expensive, this is by no means an exhaustive list of microphones. Um, what I'm using right now is the Rode Podcaster. It is by far my favorite microphone, and it's quite unique, but also quite expensive. So I'm going to build up to this one. I'll tell you the features about this one later. But what I'll do for each microphone is give you a sample of me talking, so you can hear what the voice is like. I'll also give you a sample of just quiet. So there's going to be a hiss or some background um, uh, noise that each microphone is going to pick up. And last but not least, I've got uh, one of my son's favorite songs from TV queued up. I will play that and have my iPhone sitting on the shelf back here so you get a chance to hear how good the microphone is at rejecting that background noise. Ideally, you want a microphone that picks up your voice and doesn't pick up the sirens outside or the people talking in the room next door. All right, so let's jump right into it at the low end. All right, so first off, we've got the built-in microphones on my laptop. I'm using a Lenovo Yoga C940, and so the laptop microphone right now uh, obviously is uh, not as good quality as what you heard previously in the Rode Podcaster. My microphone is over here, or my laptop is over here, and you can hear a difference in sound depending on which direction I'm pointing. You also hear a difference in quality depending on how close I get. Now I'm using my webcam. I have a Logitech Stream Cam. This is about a $200 webcam. Now obviously you don't buy this webcam just for the microphones, but it does have stereo microphones in it. Um, the sound quality here is uh, definitely nowhere in comparison to the original microphone or the first microphone I showed you, but uh, this gives you at least a chance to compare it against a built-in mic that comes with a laptop. Now I've switched over to the headset from my iPhone. I've got this plugged into my computer and the microphone is right about here. You can hear a big difference in quality depending on how close that microphone is to my mouth. So different sound depending on there and there. That also means that depending which way my head is turning, you also get different sound quality. So a cheap option, it's free, uh, not the best uh, sound quality as you can hear. Next in our parade of microphones is a Logitech H390 headset. So this one here, the microphone you can see right in front of me, is positioned consistently, so no matter where I move my head, uh, I always get the same consistent sound. But I guess you can argue, like McDonald's, consistent doesn't necessarily equate to quality. So um, you do get what you pay for. This is not so expensive, about $55 when I checked. Uh, it is a USB microphone, so it plugs into the USB port on your computer, and you can take it from there. Next up, we have the Koshin Each G2000. It has the same advantages as the other headset in that the microphone follows you wherever you go, so you have freedom to move around there. Um, I'll let you judge for yourself the sound quality on this one. Not a bad option if you want the freedom to move around. Next up is the Blue Nessie. This is our first dedicated microphone, so the other ones have been integrated into webcams and headsets and so on. This microphone sits on your desk, it's USB, so it plugs directly into the USB port on your computer, and it's under $100. The sound quality from this microphone I think is really quite good, certainly in comparison to the other ones we've been listening to. Um, it does have uh, some finicky features. It is quite sensitive to noises on the table or desk or whatever it happens to be sitting on and it does pick up background noise as you'll hear in a moment. 
This is the Power to Wise Lavalier Microphone. So the microphone is right here. I've got it clipped to my shirt. This is a style of microphone you'd be familiar with from the classroom. In the classroom, we're using wireless versions. This one is fully wired. So in other words, it's plugged directly into my computer right now. It comes with some adapters and extension cables. It works quite well overall. I'd say for $40, the sound is really quite good. I happen to use this microphone with my smartphone. So if I want to shoot a video and get better sound quality than the microphone built into the phone, this is what I use. Um, overall, I'd say for $40, really good sound. Um, and it would be suitable for things like Zoom meetings, for screencasting and so on. The thing I worry about with this microphone, and maybe this is just me personally, I forget I'm wearing it and I'm about to walk away from the computer, but realize I'm still plugged in. Anyway, I'll let you judge the microphone for yourself. Next up, we have the first in what I'd say are studio quality microphones. This is a Samson C01U. Now this microphone is a condenser microphone. In fact, all the microphones other than the very first one are condenser style. Condenser mics are good for picking up a range of sounds from quiet to medium and getting towards loud. They tend to have good sensitivity, so you can step a little bit further away from the microphone and the sound doesn't drop off as fast as some other mics. You'll notice I've got a couple other things that are added to this microphone. I've added a pop filter or a plosive filter. So when you're talking to a microphone like this, you generally want to be not too far away, about six inches or so. Um, the problem is with sounds like uh, P's and B's, plosives, um, they can make the microphone pop. So this pop filter removes that. So if I blow towards the microphone, and I remove this, you can hear the difference. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. The other thing I've got on here is a vibration isolator. So the microphone here is floating using these elastic members. So the advantage of that is if I bang on the desk, that sound doesn't transmit directly to the microphone. It still gets there, but it's not nearly as loud as some other options without vibration isolation. If you're curious, pop filter runs about $20. It's um, add a, something you can add on to pretty much any microphone. And this vibration isolator, it's about a $40, $50 addition. Now we come to the Blue Yeti. This is one of my favorite microphones. I used this for several years. It's a great quality microphone in my opinion, $180. The price is starting to climb up there, but it is a USB mic, plugs right into your computer. It has some extra features that you don't find on the other mics. You notice I'm wearing my headset. I can plug my headset directly into this microphone and I can listen to the sound exactly as it's being created. You can't do that with the other microphones I've been using to this point. Um, the advantage of that is I can adjust along the way. So if I start drifting farther away from the microphone and I hear my sound drift off, I can correct on the fly. That saves a lot of time later down the road in editing. You also see on the back here, there's the ability to adjust the gain on the microphone. So I can adjust the sensitivity of the microphone directly there, as well as on software. And there's different sound settings. I've got this set on the cardioid pattern right now. So it's picking up sound from where I am and rejecting sound for the most part behind. Uh, you can set it to do interviews and stereo and omnidirectional and all these other things. So overall, I think a nice sound out of this microphone, um, it, is uh, something that you, if you want, if you use this one, you can get like the vibration isolator that we saw on the other microphone. It also benefits from um, a pop filter. And uh, just in terms of the vibration isolator, you might have just heard that as I put that down, you can hear that. Part of that sound is just coming through the air. Part of it is coming through the table. You probably also heard a couple pops there as I blow on that microphone. So a pop filter goes a long way to improve the sound quality on this. Again, a pop filter runs only about $20, so a good investment. And now we come back to where we started. This is the Rode Podcaster. This is my favorite microphone. You're probably hearing my voice is starting to deteriorate through all of this recording, but the microphone is still doing a faithful job of picking that up. Um, this is a different style microphone than the others. This is a dynamic mic. It uses inductance to generate the electrical signal from sound, not capacitance. So the condenser mics use a capacitor, this uses an inductor. What does that mean? That means I actually have to be really quite close to the microphone to get sound. And I can get very close and the sound doesn't deteriorate. However, as I move away, it drops off quite quickly. It's an end address microphone, meaning I speak into the end. If I go to the side, it changes the sound quality, it's muffled. Um, the other thing is this one has a built-in pop filter. So Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. You don't hear that same pop sound that we had with the other microphones. If I blow directly into this, it's not so loud. 
Um, the drawback of this microphone is it's expensive. The microphone itself is about $330, give or take. Then there's the vibration isolator, and that runs about $40 or $50. And then there's the boom arm, and that runs about $120 to $130. So by the time you're all in, it's $500. Now, I'm happy to spend that money because this microphone is really good at cutting out background noise. The fact that it's a dynamic mic means I have to be close and sounds that are far away are um, not picked up in the same way. So the elevator that's outside my office or the students walking by in the hallway, those sounds don't register on this microphone the same that they do on the other ones. It is much better at rejecting those sounds. So the extra money you spend in that way saves time down the road in editing, perhaps. So this is the right microphone for me. Uh, I'm happy to spend the money to get the quality out of this one. That doesn't mean it's the right microphone for you. Uh, hopefully, through hearing all these different mics, this gives you a chance to make a, an informed decision. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to play very quickly each microphone with silence so you can hear the background hiss that you'll get from them. And then I'll also play with that music in the background so you can hear how good each microphone is at rejecting background noise. <laughs> 